Good evening and welcome to another series, another session of Dynamic Life Ministries. We're here tonight continuing on our series and topic of faith and so good that you're joining us tonight on Facebook and other social platforms. So great to have you with us. We love you and appreciate you. Thank God for you. Trust that you're safe. Trust that you've taken all the precautions that you need to take. Although we live by faith and we put on the armor of God, there's still practical things that we need to do to protect us from a virus and sickness and disease because the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And I don't want him to devour any one of you. I don't want him to get in any way, shape or form into your life. So as we start tonight, we get, we're in the series of faith. Tonight we're going to be ministering on the spirit of faith. Father, tonight I thank you for your word. I thank you, Father, for your power of your anointing. That, Father, as we come into your presence, thank you, Holy Spirit, for the goodness of your word. Thank you for the goodness of your life in us. Father, we are hid in Christ. Christ in us and us in you makes us a formidable partnership. I thank you for your word tonight that it shall go forth, shall not return void. So, Father, those that are watching tonight, I thank you that you would give them clarity. You would give them understanding, wisdom, and knowledge to receive your word. That this word, Father, will change all of our lives. We thank you for it. We bless you for it. And we give you praise, honor, and glory for it now. In Jesus' name. Thank God for all of those that support us financially, support the ministry practically and materialistically. Thank you for your sowing of your time and everything else into the kingdom of God. As we start tonight, I want to read uh, opening scriptures from the epistle of John, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4 and 5. For whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. Our faith is the victory that overcomes the world. What a powerful scripture, one verse of scripture, one piece of scripture, that our faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. And church tonight, you know, one of the problems that, that we've had in the body of Christ is that people know outside, external or exterior to them, that Jesus is the Son of God. But he's not their personal Savior, and they don't have a personal relationship with him. And tonight, faith is what brings us into that personal relationship. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, it says this, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt with him the measure of faith. So every one of us, doesn't need to be puffed up, doesn't need to be uh, impressed with ourselves. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the power of God. And tonight as we continue, we've spoken about what faith is. We spoke last on Sunday about the measure of faith. Tonight we want to talk about the spirit of faith. How do we release the measure of faith that God has given us? And again, just to recap, God has not given us a partition. God has not given us little bits of faith. God has given us the full measure, the full portion of faith according to this word, according to the spirit and the power of God. So our text for tonight comes initially, one of the first passage comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. Now since we have the same spirit of faith, you see, faith has a spirit. Faith has a substance. Faith is a living thing. It has a spirit. The spirit of faith. That in keeping with the scriptures, Paul said, I believe, and so I speak. We also believe, and therefore we speak. Church, when we have the spirit of faith, we believe and we speak. You see, when we don't have the spirit of faith, we don't believe or our belief is limited, therefore our speech is hindered. But when we have the spirit of faith, we will have the belief in God, the faith in God, and therefore we shall also speak and proclaim the word of God with boldness 
and with authority and conviction. Amen. So God says further down in, in chapter 4, he says, while we do not look at the things which were seen, but at the things that are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary or carnal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Church, tonight our focus of faith, the spirit of faith, needs to be on that which God has proclaimed, which is in the realm of the spirit, which is in the realm of eternity, and not in the realm of carnality. We've been conditioned in the human habitation in life to look at carnal things, to set our mind on things carnal instead of setting our mind on things heavenly in the realm of the spirit. Now the spirit of faith has some attributes. The spirit of faith has some key components to them which we're going to share and go through tonight. The first one is that faith believes. Then faith speaks. And what faith speaks, it calls the things that are not as though they are. Faith and the spirit of faith staggers not at the promises of God, but believes and speaks what are the promises of God. Faith hopes against all hope. Faith is above hope. Faith is not hope. Faith is the substance by which hope materializes. Faith is not weak. The spirit of faith is a strong spirit. It's a powerful spirit. And then we're going to talk about the spirit of faith speaks with authority and dominion. So we're going to talk about the faith that believes, faith that speaks, faith that calls things that are not as though they were, faith that staggers not at the promises of God, faith that hopes above all hope, and faith that is not weak but strong and mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It's one of the weapons that God has given us to be overcomers as we read as we started this evening's uh, broadcast. And faith speaks with authority, and faith speaks with dominion. You see, as in what we believe, faith is released as we speak. In Romans chapter 10, and verse 6, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh in this way. It does not say in our heart, who shall ascend into the heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. Or it shall not descend into the depths of Hades that would bring Christ up from the dead. But it says the word of God is nigh in our mouth and in our heart. That is the word of faith. And Paul said that which I preach. Church, tonight I want to ask you, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The spirit of faith is what is in our heart. It's what's in our substance. It's what's in our core. It is nigh in our mouth. When people, have you noticed when they get into a situation where they have a, a loss of temper and they lose their temper and they get distressed, what is in their abundance of their heart or in their belly comes out of their mouth. Sometimes it's not good stuff. When a husband and wife start a fight, often what they fight about and what they start screaming and, and, and cursing each other with is not the thing that they started with, but it's what's in their heart. The substance in them comes out of them and it pollutes the conversation instead of sticking to the issue that should have just been discussed quietly and politely, but it becomes a, a battleground. Why? Because the spirit in them comes forth out of them. The spirit of bitterness, the spirit of pride, the spirit of anger, the spirit of resentment, all of those things, the spirit of unforgiveness. Those things come out because they have to be inside in which to come out on the outside. And so tonight as we look at faith, we need to understand that the spirit of faith dwelleth in us richly. Because God is faith. It dwells in us. And whenever we get into a situation or we're put into a position, what will come out of us if we have put faith in, faith comes out. But if we haven't put faith in, faith cannot come out. You see, church, tonight, and we discussed on, on, on Sunday, the levels, the measure of faith. And some things need great faith. 
Other things need little faith. So we need to develop by listening to the word of God, listening to the principles and precepts of God. We need to develop the belief in God that is absolute. It's not in part. You see, some people believe that Jesus came and died for them on the cross and that they got saved. But they don't believe that God heals, saves, and delivers. They don't believe that God is a miraculous God, a miracle-working God, but they do believe for salvation. But that is little faith. You need little faith to get saved, but you need great faith to walk in the power of signs, wonders, miracles, and the supernatural miraculous of God. And so God wants us to have great faith, and the spirit of faith is that which causes it to be released and that which to be great. The spirit of faith utterly believes. The spirit of faith totally believes. The spirit of faith acts on the word of God without any doubt. People who have great faith believe truths and statements of the word of God that relatively few people around them will believe. When a doctor is telling us one thing and natural science is presenting evidence in one way, the spirit of faith rises up and says, that's the circumstance, that's the natural. But in the supernatural, God says differently. See, the spirit of faith comes against all odds. The spirit of faith believes when nobody else will believe. Amen. The spirit of faith will rise above every situation and every circumstance. Amen. You know, believing. If I look at David, here's a scripture that people probably don't read often when we talk about the story of David fighting and beating Goliath. In 1 Samuel 17, in verse 48, it says, David ran towards Goliath. See, the spirit of faith is not timid. The f spirit of faith is not fearful. The spirit of faith does not come backwards and, 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 and progress in fear and trepidation. The spirit of faith is a bold spirit. Amen. David picked up his sling, picked up his stones, and ran towards Goliath. You see, when we have the spirit of faith, we have the spirit of boldness. The level of your boldness is directly proportional to your level of belief or your level of faith. Amen. If you don't have faith, you'll be timid and intimidated. But when you have faith and you have the spirit of faith, church, you will walk in the power, the presence, and the purpose of God. And because we believe, faith speaks. Amen. You cannot speak what you don't believe. Because it will come across insincere. It will come across phony. It will come across shallow. You know, one of the things that we need to understand, we don't need. That's why the Bible says, don't let foolish jesting even be mentioned among you. You see, when I say to my wife, I love you, I don't say it a thousand times a day because she wants me to say it so she can hear it. I say it and every time I say it is because I believe it, I live it, and I act on it. I speak with a conviction, not just utter words. Mark 11, 23 says, Verily, and we'll get into this next week, but I just want to touch on this tonight. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, And be ye removed, and shall not doubt in his heart, but that which he believes, that which he saith, shall come to pass. I want you to understand in Matthew, in, sorry, in Mark eleven twenty three, the word say or saith is three times mentioned. You see, faith that believes speaks. Faith speaks to the mountain. Faith says to the mountain. Faith declares to the mountain, Amen. be gone. Doubt says, I'll leave. Doubt says, I'll get away from the situation. I'll move from the circumstance. But the spirit of faith says, no, circumstance, you leave me. Doubt, you go from me. Mountain, be gone in Jesus' name. The spirit of faith is a conviction Amen. that moves mountains in Jesus' precious mighty name. Amen. Whatever so he saith, when he believes it, it shall come to pass. We need to understand that the spirit of faith doesn't have doubt, but it speaks boldly. It's founded on the belief of God's word. Thirdly, faith that believes 
Faith that speaks. What does it speak? Not only does it speak with boldness, not only does it speak with sincerity and certainty. Faith calls things that are not as though Amen. they are. Out of the abundance of our heart, church, faith speaks abundance. Out of the poorness of our heart, we speak poor and poverty. I don't have a spirit of poverty. I have a spirit of faith. Amen. Amen. So, I want to say this to you. When we are bold in our faith because of our belief and we speak with conviction, unbelief has no hold on us because it has no root in us. I want you to think about that statement for a moment. Unbelief has no hold on us because it has no root in us. Amen. So whatever has root in us will have hold over us. So if bitterness has got root in us, to a degree it will have hold over us. If unforgiveness has a root in us, it will have a hold over us. Conversely, and in the positive, if we have faith and trust and belief in God, it will have a root in us, therefore it will have a hold over us. In other words, it will hold us up. It will lift us up. Faith speaks, faith believes, and faith calls things that aren't as if they are. The spirit of faith operates, church, above the realm of the natural. The spirit of faith operates in the supernatural. God said when there was nothing, the Bible says in Genesis, the earth was without form and it was void. And God spoke above the formness and the voidness and said, let there be light and there was light. Let there be and there was. He spoke all the way through Genesis chapter 1 and he spoke things that were not as if they were. And as he spoke what was not as if it was it became was hallelujah excuse the english <laughs> but the spirit operates above the realm of circumstance and natural uh, happenings faith acts and it calls things to action it brings things into the realm of the natural that were in the realm of the supernatural faith calls things that aren't as if they were if you're in a not so good relationship at the moment, or you have problems with your children at the moment, most people walk around confessing how bad it is, how poor they are, how distressed they are, instead of talking things that aren't as if they were. When God says the two shall be one, and a husband and wife shall be one, you need to confess that oneness day in and day out. You need to play that thing in. You need to speak to the mountain of hindrance. You need to speak to the mountain of insecurity. You need to speak to the mountains of division and divide and you need to pull those down in the name of Jesus. Come on somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. You can say amen if you're listening on Facebook. I want you to type amen. If something in your life needs to change, you need to speak it by faith. You need to have that spirit of faith, that tenacity and that boldness to go out and preach it, speak it, live it and, and, and receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We know in Isaiah 58, sorry, 55, God speaks of the blessing of God. You see, faith is boldness to speak the things that aren't as if they were. And in verse 13 of chapter 55, he says, Instead of the thorn, you shall have the fir tree. And instead of the, the briar, you shall have the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign, and it shall not be cut off. When we have the Spirit of God, the Spirit of faith, nothing shall be impossible to us. You know, so many people quote that scripture, and it comes out of our head instead of out of faith and out of our heart. God says if you believe, nothing is impossible. Amen. You see, with God, all things are possible. With us, with faith, nothing is impossible. But without faith, the Bible says it in Hebrews eleven six, 6, it's impossible to even please God. Without faith, the, the God still remains the God of the possible, but we still have impossibility because we don't have faith. But the minute we have faith, church, we are able to bring down out of the realm of the, of the possible into the natural realm and bring possible into an impossible situation. Amen. You see, it staggers. Faith staggers not at the promise of God. You know, there's 32,000 promises in the Word of God. Seven odd thousand of those directly relate to the New Testament believer. How many do we believe? How many do we stagger at? I trust that you don't stagger at more than you believe. 
We need to make sure that we stagger not at the promises of God. In Romans chapter 4, it's an account of, of Abraham. Now, Abraham was 100 years old. Sarah was almost as old as he was. But God had said to him, you will have a son and you'll be the father of many nations. And we know that he got impatient and ran off before God's timing and messed up a little bit. But you see, if we'll believe God and we'll stagger not at the promise of God, that which we believe, hope against all hope. Imagine if somebody said to you tonight, if you're 70, 80 years old, and somebody said to you, you're going to have another child, and that child is going to do mighty exploits for God. Would we believe or would we mock and scoff? See, when I look at Noah, Noah was told by God, I want you to build an ark. He didn't know what an ark was. There's coming a flood. He didn't know what a flood was because they'd never seen rain and he didn't live at the sea. He didn't know what that water mass looked like, but he staggered not at the promise of God and he built the ark. Amen. And you know, a lot of people mocked him. A lot of people criticized him. His whole town ostracized him and practiced social distancing from him. But when the rains came, hallelujah. When the glory fell, hallelujah. People then realized it was useless to mock him because he was the only one in the ark with his family. <laughs> Church, I want to tell you this morning, that you, you and I, even though you might be mocked for standing and staggering not at the promises of God, it's going to be okay. Because when that thing comes through, when the power of God is released, when you believe and pray and the miracle happens, people won't be mocking anymore. Amen. I found it very interesting when I listen on social media right now across Europe and across America. In they go into bookstores and bookshops. There's not a Bible on the shelf. All of a sudden, a lot of people, yes, it's motivated by fear. Yes, it's motivated by the hype and the frenzy. But there's not a Bible to be had in some stores. Why? Because people are rushing out to get the Bible. But just a few months ago, they, they, you couldn't give them away. People said we weren't interested. All of a sudden, something has shifted. Something has turned. The power of God yeah. is convicting people. You better start reading the word. Hallelujah. Come on. Stagger not at the promises of God. Romans 4.19 says, And not being weak in faith, he considered not his own body unto death because it was old. And that Sarah was also about a, uh, the, the, the deadness of her womb. But he staggered not at the promises of God. And, and uh, he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving God the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, when we don't stagger at God's promises, we'll give him the glory. When we stagger at God's promise, we lose giving him the glory. We miss an opportunity to speak the things of God, the power of God, the certainty of God. Amen. Spirit of faith, church, is not weak. The spirit of faith has a foundation in a confidence in what God says. See, that's why we need to de develop in those that, that fellowship with us, those that are in the congregation here with us in Centurion. You know I keep saying to you, you need to adopt a position on the word and not an opinion that is in the natural. We need a position of God's word. Why? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When we have a godly position based on this word, we will have faith because faith is in this word. Faith is in the spirit of God. By faith, the Bible says, Noah, Amen. being warned of God, built the ark. By faith, Abraham said to the young man, you wait here with the donkey, my son and I are going up to worship, and we, plural, will come back. You see, he staggered not at the promise of God. Even though he was about to have to do a sacrifice of his own son, he knew in his heart that God had promised that his son and he'd be the father of many nations, and he was not going to let that promise die at the sacrificial altar. He was willing to lay it down, but he knew that God would raise it up because he staggered not at the promise of God. Sometimes we don't see our miracle church because we don't have the spirit of faith we stagger at the promise of God let's not stagger at the promises of God amen see faith is fully persuaded that faith operates in the now the spirit of faith is fully persuaded that we operate in the now that's why Hebrews 11 1 says now faith is Faith is not hope deferred. Faith is not something that's going to come in the future. Faith is now. And when we speak and pray and believe and receive, we get the blessing of God now. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith operates above the realm of the natural. 
It's not weak, but it's strong to act. When Jesus spoke, we know the leper that he cleansed. He said to him, be healed, be well, be cleansed. And instantly, the Bible says immediately, that man was healed. The woman that was doubled over and was paralyzed, Jesus said, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. As he said, thou art loosed, the spirit of faith, that woman straightened up. The woman that had an issue of blood, she got dressed because she was in her, her, her other clothes and she got dressed and she came and she touched the hem of his garment. She already had a spirit of faith. You see, the spirit of faith says, I'm going to get what I believe God for. I'm not going to wait till I see it in the natural. I'm not going to wait till it presents or manifests. I believe it when I pray for it and I get it. She went knowing that she was going to get from God. The spirit of faith acts with dominion and authority. Amen. You see, when we know our dominion, we know our authority. God says, Genesis chapter 1. That he made man in his image and gave us authority over all the, the things of the world, over all the beasts of the field, etc. We walk in that authority. God also says that I've given you power over the demons, over devils to cast down, pull down to uh, all strongholds. I've given you the weapons of your warfare that are not carnal, but mighty through God. That, when we know that and we believe that, we act on that, we act in absolute dominion of kingdom and authority of Jesus Christ and the blood of the Lamb. The spirit of faith acts on authority, church, that God has given us. It's not in our own power. It's in God's power. It's in God's authority. That's why we can read boldly, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, and Isaiah 62, that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. You see, the spirit of faith will come up out of us and we'll be able to pray, lay hands on the sick, and trust God that as we pray, they shall recover. I said on Sunday, can you imagine what's going to happen when the church rises up the day of the saints and all the believers start praying and laying hands on the sick, then they start speaking over situations and circumstances and things start to change in the supernatural and they start manifesting and presenting in the natural. There's going to be a mighty, mighty move of people coming to Jesus because they see reality. Hey, come on. But we've got to begin to speak, we've got to believe, we've got to act, and we've got to do what God's called us to do. We can't Amen. be anywhere else, any for any longer. You see, the Bible says in Isaiah 62, verse 3, as we close, Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hands of the Lord. Are you a crown of glory in the hands of the Lord tonight? Well, with the spirit of faith, we do what God's called us to do. We fulfill our plan, our purpose, and position that God has put us in and placed us in because we want to be that crown of glory. For him, not for ourselves. We don't want to wear the crown of our own glory. We want his glory to be given to him. Amen. We want to see God. We want to see God doing what, what God wants us to do. You see, when we build strong faith and we build the spirit of faith, let me tell you just quickly how to do it. Number one, we need the word in our lives. We need to know the word for every circumstance, every situation. We need to know that word. We need to keep it in our mouth. We need to keep it before our eyes. We need to keep it front and center so that we focus on it. And doubt has no and doubt and unbelief has no root and no hold over our lives. We need to know that God is our provider. He is Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Nissi. He's Jehovah Rapha. All the names that we quote, he's Jehovah Shalom, our peace. We need not just to quote those names and speak them in, in Hebrew. We need to speak them in faith. We need to speak them in life. We need to speak them in power. Praise God. We need to speak to the mountain and expect the result. We need to praise God because it's done when we pray, when we believe. We need to hold fast, church, our confession. For it has great recompense yeah. of reward. We need to diligently act on the position that God's word calls us. We need to diligently act. Now I'm not saying disobey rules and, and be uh, ignorant of the law. Because the devil's like a roaring lion. But we need to speak in faith. We need to speak the life of God. We need to take the offensive. For too long church. The church has been on the defensive we need to be on the offensive. We need the spirit of faith. We don't need the spirit of tenacity. We don't need the spirit of weakness. We don't need the spirit of, 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 of poverty. We need the spirit of boldness. We need the spirit of, of God, the spirit of faith. 
Father, tonight I pray for the spirit of faith to arise and its enemy be scattered. I pray, Lord, tonight that the church would rise up in faith, Amen. believing the word, walking in the word, acting in the word, living the word, speaking the word, doing the word, declaring the word, prophesying the word, and bringing the word out of the heavenly realm Amen. into existence in the natural realm. Father, I pray for your church tonight. I pray, Lord, you feed us, you bless us, you touch us and provide for us according to faith. Let faith arise tonight, Father, and its enemy of doubt and fear and unbelief be scattered in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, thank you so much for watching. I trust that this has blessed you. Please inbox us. Please talk to us. If you missed some of it, the, the, the video will be live on our, our, our YouTube channel probably tomorrow morning. Uh, please inbox us. Video us. Uh, tomorrow night, Vilma and I will we, we'll be back for another episode of the Day of the Saints when we're dialoguing and talking with people about what it means to rise up as the church in the Day of the Saints. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Thank you for sharing this message with your friends and your neighbors, putting it on other media platforms, other groups that you're in, so that the Word of God can go out and it shall do what it accomplished and set out to do. Bless you. Good night and faith shall arise. Amen.